Finally, July is here already a week before, but this video had to be gone. 7th July's horoscope seems as follows. Sun is in, oops, 21 degree of Gemini. 21 degrees, first Pada Punarvasu. Mm -hmm. Punarvasu is active. Jagannath Rath Yatra is also going on in different parts of the world, of course. Um, then Moon is in Shravan Nakshatra, first Pada. This is New Delhi, 2.26 a.m. time. <laughs> Then Mars is in Uttar Bhadra Pada, third Pada, on 11 degrees in Pisces. It is direct. Mars is going to be retrograde after some time. Not in this month, of course, in September, hopefully. Then Mercury is retrograde. Mm -hmm. Many of you have been telling me why crazy things are happening. Well, Mercury is retrograde. It's in... Second Pada of Ardhra Nakshatra, Gemini, of course, it will be in Gemini. Then Jupiter has beautifully entered Sagittarius. Uttara Shada, first Pada, 29 degrees. What about Venus? Venus is hovering around in Taurus the last month. It has been in Taurus from last three months. And it is going to enter Gemini very soon. Let's see when he's entering. So. He is currently on 13 degree, Rohini Nakshatra, third Pada, second Pada, Taurus. And then Shani Maharaj is retrograde, five degree, Uttarashada, third Pada in Capricorn, of course. And Rahu Maharaj, he is in four degrees, Mrigashira, fourth Pada in Gemini. There you go, conjunct Sun Mercury. Then Ketu is in second Pada of Mula Nakshatra, conjunct Jupiter in Sagittarius. Uranus is in 15 degrees of Aries and Neptune is in retrogression, 26 degree of Aquarius. And Pluto is, who again Sagittarius, back 29 degrees. Uttarasada first Pada, it's literally with Jupiter. All right, so... The energies of this month uh, start with the retrogression of Mercury. I'll keep my mobile here so that I can see the chart. <laughs> so the retrogression energy of Mercury is very strong. So this this month of this year, July, is it's like a new beginning for this year. Why? Because Jupiter has entered the sign Sagittarius, as you know, and Mercury is retrograde and Venus has gone direct. And Jupiter and Saturn are still retrograde, although Jupiter has changed sign. So, therefore, uh, this month, this Gemini energy is very prominent. Why do I say? Because we just uh, had an eclipse on 5th July, right? On uh, the lunar eclipse, the Sagittarius Gemini axis. And uh, many of you have told me that uh, because this, so the lunar eclipse, so things came into completion. Okay, It's like Purnima, it's like a full moon. So therefore, many of you have already told me that uh, there were so many things which you had planned to do depending on your dashas or universe had thrown to you and you succeeded in doing and some of you told me that you failed and you understood you are not supposed to be there. So be happy if you failed when there was an eclipse because Rahu Ketu, see you have to understand what Rahu Ketu is. Rahu Ketu represents all the freaking karmic baggage. Rahu Ketu, one word, karmic baggage, that is all, two words, <laughs> or one word, karma. All the things, everything is under Rahu Ketu. All the planets, they are under Rahu Ketu. All the planets, they are, they are under means, I, I, I don't mean to say they are like Kal Sab Yoga here or there, I don't mean to say that, but all the planets are functioning because of Rahu and Ketu. Why? Because... You have material desire. You have, I have, everybody has. That is why they represent karma. They represent karmic backlog. And most of the time, so whenever people think, oh, this is a very karmic planet. What does it mean, karmic planet? So karmic planet means a planet which gives you suffering. That is how people think. Which is not wrong in one sense. Because if you see, most of the times, 
uh, most of the times if you get up in the morning and you see uh, most of the things that you do end up giving you suffering right you there if you if you see um, the amount of things that can give you suffering in this world and the amount of things which can give you happiness in this world i mean uh, just just try to put it in a basket two baskets and then you will see the numbers you know most of the things are there in this world uh, to give us suffering and there are very few things which actually make us happy and when i say happy i don't mean to say that uh, they don't make us happy materially yes materially there are many things which make us hap uh, happy or pleasurable i would say but i am talking at a deeper level there are very few things you know especially uh, recently i was reading an article that in us that conducted a study uh, where uh, why i'm speaking of this because uh, gemini is very prominent this month all right so this month this eclipse has happened and certain things have worked certain things have not worked so now uh, this is a very good time to reflect on ourselves so there was this study where um, they had uh, done a lot of research on people uh, passing out from all the premier ivy league colleges you know like uh, stanford oxford mit and all these colleges uh people who passed out 30 years 40 years 50 years 60 years 20 years back and now currently where they are you know? so they found in that uh, in this research that uh, currently where these people are and they compared it to who they were when they were in these colleges okay so then now they took this consensus okay you were this that time now you are this okay they saw in different companies some many of them are ceos or many of them are having their own companies you know many of them are into investment and all these things so but they realized that um, there was one common criteria among these people who are happy currently okay what is that common criteria which they found out it was it was not there educational knowledge when they were in these big big uh, colleges it is not even the money which they have earned in the last you know 50 years or 20 years 30 years 40 years it is not even the level of name and fame which they have earned what is that which has made them actually happy was that those people now at this current stage who are happy they they have uh, had sustained uh, relationships actually uh, not only uh, husband or wife but stable family or you know, like uh, good good communication skills within relationships so um, therefore it is said that if you if you want to be happy in the long run you must have good relationships with people so if you think that uh, if you do not have uh, if you you don't have good relationships with people and uh, you'll always be happy then uh, you you are an illusion because you will be miserable because uh, humans are social creatures nowadays uh, there's this uh, stupidity of uh, fake independence you know everybody pretends to be very strong you know fake uh, it's all fake rahu type uh, stupid fake independence you know they're sitting and watching netflix and they uh, keep searching you know how to get rid of loneliness people are committing suicides they are dying and then they will share posts on instagram about independence you know how strong independence makes you it's all crappy garbage all right these people will have miserable ends actually so therefore don't be dependent on people don't be independent also be interdependent that's the difference see dependence will make you weak you are dependent on people you are wanting support from people that will make you weak sometimes you might be dependent on somebody that's different okay if your health is not good then you are dependent on people but most of the time or you can be independent independent makes you very independence can make you very hard hearted you may have a fake sense of illusion that you are you are like god you know you can do anything actually which is uh, fake actually because uh, as soon as difficult time comes you fall back actually that is why addictions are increasing people are uh, you know people are becoming more and more unhappy these days because of independence but there is something higher than independence also so dependence is level 0 okay uh, it, uh, sorry not 0 it's a minus 1 okay dependence then there is level 0 which is independence then the next level is interdependence 
what is interdependence interdependence is the energy of sagittarius actually and all most of the planets are in this uh, in this gemini sagittarius axis this month so this is a very good month to uh, focus on interdependence i would say because gemini is the sign of communication but it is when it is harmonious with sagittarius then it is that kind of communication which uh, fosters interdependence so interdependence means i am good at something you are good at something but let's join and do it together that is what is interdependence and interdependence is the only thing which gives you happiness because in astrology interdependence is represented by the natural benefits all right uh independence is independence and dependence both are represented by natural malefics so they do not give you happiness okay no amount of dependence or independence will make you happy there's only one thing which makes you happy that is interdependence yes many people will disagree they will blast they will get angry they will fire they will say we will unsubscribe from your channel but that's a fact because if this was not true then everybody would be living uh, alone in their rooms you know and these these people who are living like this uh, they are the most miserable people i know and i am not talking of materialistic people here i know many people not many i would say i know some people who are connected to some spiritual communities and organizations even they are victims of this uh, independence independence mindset you know they, they, they think ah oh, why why do we need communities you know we can just sit in a room and just do mantras well uh, you can do for some time uh, come come and tell me after 10 years <laughs> all right because the material nature the materialistic society is every moment trying to pull you down right so therefore um, even if you want to improve your health then you can you you need other people because uh, non need doesn't mean that if you stay with 10 healthy people you will automatically become healthy no because you you have to change you have to change the environment if you want to change your life you have to change your habits and to change your habits it is very crucial that you change your environment because if you don't change your environment then your output will be by default very low your efficiency will be very minimal because where you are that enhances uh, how you think about yourself also if you are sitting with crooks idiots thugs and uh, jokers who are all the time gossiping speaking negatively about others and uh, you are you are all the time surrounding yourself with these people who are like pulling others down then this is what will uh, happen to you you will also end up gossiping all that have you seen people they from the morning till the night they will only gossip who did what he did this he did this you know so this is how they are ruining their lives so therefore sagittarius is the sign of inspiration and this eclipse has happened in this month so this is a very good time to seek inspiration from uh, people who are better than you yes sorry to say that okay uh, you need to hang out with people who are better than you because they say if you are the smartest person in the room then you are in the wrong room <laughs> in fact uh, my shiksha guru used to say that whenever you are in a whenever you are in a group of people you should feel that i have to keep up to the expectations of these people that doesn't mean that you are in some anxiety all the time that's healthy anxiety yes these people are better than me so let me learn from them and let me also become better that that is the attitude which you should have but if you do not have a healthy self esteem this will become negative you will become a victim of inferiority complex why because inferiority complex is basically self obsession you, know, you are thinking of yourself all the time you think the planets revolve around you the gods are like your slaves you know like uh, there was one person uh, recently very egoistic very arrogant he's an atheist uh, he had met me uh, recently uh, online and he asked me a question you know oh you always keep saying god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him. did i say this today oh maybe not <laughs> so um, so this person asked me where is your god you know in this corona millions of people are dying where is your god why does he protect where is he he is not there god doesn't exist oh my god very angry <laughs> so this this idiot's idea is god is like his dog you know he's like his slave have you seen how slaves are treated or were treated once upon a time you know 
they were like uh, people used to purchase slaves, you know, like they used to do all this uh, nonsense. So this idiot also thinks that God is also like his slave. He can just beat, he is like his slave. You know, you order, hey God, kick out Corona from here. You bloody God, you are such a useless bloody damn God. Kick out Corona, I want to enjoy, you know, I cannot go outside actually. No? So then I told him that um, uh, from where has this Corona come? You know, everybody knows, I'm not talking of the country, but I'm. what I'm saying is, uh, the scriptures advise us that please do not kill animals. If you do, then you will suffer karma. And then what happened? These uh, some set of people they were eating all this crap, and then uh, the rest is history, right? Uh, how many cases? Millions and millions of people affected. Thousands have lost their jobs. Then uh, people have committed suicides. Then it's mayhem all all over. Okay. So, yeah, this is how some people are. So, you, you do not follow what God says. And then you think God is like your dog. We'll just uh, obey to your uh, instructions, right? So, that that is a very wrong approach to anything in life. Even material society also. If you want to progress, then uh, let us try to learn from people who are better than us. Let us not uh, get envious and uh, behave like snakes, you know, trying to pull them down. So that's very dangerous. So this month has a very harmonious energy. And this Venus in Taurus can also help us to uh, understand people better, actually. So whenever Venus is uh, transiting in a good sign for Venus, not in general. So for example, Taurus is a very good sign. It's a great sign, its own sign. So it's a very good time when people can understand each other actually and then try to uh, see, not understand in a way, communicate, but Venus gives you that feel good factor, you know. So if Venus is transiting in a good sign for Venus, then it is easier to uh, mix with people because you, by default, you can get a feel good factor depending on your dasas, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a very difficult dasha then you may not get a very good factor but in general i am saying okay if your dashas are decent also you will get this feeling okay so then uh, after that let us go to uh, 15 july so 15 july what is happening uh, venus is still uh, uh, yeah so sun uh, sun is in 28 degrees so let's go to 17th or 18 july when sun <laughs> Yeah, so on 17th, Sun enters Cancer, okay? He will enter Punar Vasu for fourth power. So, uh, currently also now, uh, day 6, so till uh, this, uh, around 20th, I guess, yes, uh, Sun will be in Punar Vasu. So, uh, whenever planets are transiting Punar Vasu, it's a great time to read, read about Lord Ram and Ramayana. And Punar Vasu also means we are uh, furnishing certain things which we uh, left in the past okay certain things which we thought that we do not need to do but now you will realize you need to do okay depending on which house sun rules in your chart and then it moves to cancer and when it moves to cancer then uh, people uh, let's see what else is happening uh, what, what about what about moon moon on 18th is in 20 is in Rigashi, right is with venus okay Yes, so 17th, 18th, uh, Moon and Venus are conjunct. Moon is exalted that day. And um, yeah, so this is a very beautiful day, I would say, if you want to uh, reconnect with uh, people and reconnect with your friends, family members, or your loved ones, your spouse especially. So this is a very good time, 17th and 18th. We can do that. And apart from this, uh, if, we, if we check about a check related to Mars, then he enters Revati first father, all right? So as I said earlier in my Mars transit video, if uh, a planet enters uh, Pisces, then it's entering the uh, sign where the planet can either feel that, let me leave it to God or let me do my best and then let God take care, okay? So that's a very good attitude whenever planet transits uh, Pisces or especially Revati. So whichever house has Mars rules in your chart, Throughout this month, you can get this uh, enlightened feeling actually, okay? Then let us, if you go to the end of the month on, yeah, on 12th July, uh, Mercury will be direct, okay, 12th July. So around from 14th, 15th, you will start seeing the results of Mercury's direct motion. And because 
because it is with Rahu, so the uh, technology related stuff can boom, communication can boom during this time. And if you uh, if you are wanting to sign some deal or do some negotiation, uh, it's good if you wait till at least 14th and do it after 14th. That would be my uh, opinion on this. And Jupiter and uh, Mercury are directly aspecting each other on 31st July also. And if you check uh, carefully, then uh, Sun and Saturn are aspecting each other. All right. So from 15 July, Sun Saturn are on mutual aspect. So when Sun Saturn are aspecting each other, uh, now here it's a very peculiar energy. Who is more stronger? Sun is in Cancer and Saturn is in Aquarius, uh, Capricorn. So both are very strong, but Saturn is more strong because he's in own sign. Okay. So therefore. It might happen that uh, the energy of Saturn is becoming, uh, Sun is becoming a bit overwhelmed by the energy of Saturn. So, which means you might have to do more and put your expectations down. All right. So, whichever houses Saturn Saturn rules in your chart uh, from 15 July till uh, 15th of August, you might get a feeling that you need to use those traits. Okay. And by that only the house, the house which sun rules will evolve actually. This is how uh, aspects uh, play a role actually, okay. And the month ends by uh, moon uh, going into Scorpio in Jeshta Nakshatra. And uh, what about what about Mars? Mars enters Revati, th Revati third pada. Mars is slowing down because gradually he'll be retrograde. And Mercury is in 26 degree of Gemini, and then uh, Jupiter has reached uh, Purva Shada, fourth Pada again. Point to be noted, right? I'll make a video on this. And Venus is in 29 degrees, and if I check for 1st August, then I'm very sure Venus would have uh, entered Gemini. And there you go on 2nd august i guess he enters gemini all right so zero degree gemini venus enters and uh, moon also conjoins jupiter and k2 all right so it's a very interesting month to connect with others to empower yourself by interdependence all right uh, i hope uh, if you are new then please uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, I hope you are liking the Instagram quiz videos which I have recently started putting and if you want me to make quizzes on any other specific topic or any such short videos then you can please write it down in the comments all right thank you very much for your patience and if you want a consultation from me you can go to my website down below okay what is there with you all the time just uh, look to him and you will find him